And uh, I guess this just speaks to part of the reason why I'm wanting to do this series in the first place is that the official word on a lot of this stuff is completely absent. It's so odd to me that you can have these uh, like Atlantis, for example, is something, when you say the word Atlantis, everyone has something that comes into their head. It might be the animated film that was made by Disney. It might be uh, references in pop culture or something like that. It might be that they somehow uh, actually went and read Plato and, and saw what he said about it or whatever. But everyone's got some idea of this thing in their mind. It is a cultural touchstone that everyone knows about and yet no one knows about. When I started looking into it and the, and the reality of what Plato wrote about it and what it, what it purportedly was, I've never heard any of those things. I've never heard anyone mention any of the things that I'm, that I'm seeing in the actual original writing about, it, about Atlantis. And it's kind of odd to me that there are these things that everyone knows about and yet people don't know anything about. And when I go to the educational community, people who are professionals in this topic, but people who on their resume say, I'm an expert in Plato, I'm an expert in, uh, like I said, marine archaeology, ancient cultures, Greek history, all of those things. I contact all these people and they either have no response or no interest. That, I think it pleases God if we go out and figure out, like mm -hmm. I think I've referenced this before, but the, the mysteries of the earth mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, in, in which case, I start thinking about it and it's like, yeah, why can't I fly yet? What's going on? <laughs> What's... Um, I'll bet there's some sort of force out there, some sort of energy that we're not even fully aware of yet. You know, we're so based around electricity. It's kind of, mm -hmm. it's actually kind of uh, disconcerting when you stop and think about it. It's like, wow, everything in the entire United States, most of it, everything that moves is based around electricity in mm -hmm. some way. Mm -hmm. What if there was another form of energy that we could use that's not electricity? Yeah. Yeah. What if, you, you know, because we, we can use electricity to make a magnet. We can use electricity to make different things and do, but it all comes back to electricity. Yeah, yeah. Which inherently, that is a great, it's a great energy that exists in the atmosphere and everything. And in, in the, on the earth, we can make it, we can, yeah, all kinds of stuff, produce it. But I'll bet there's something else out there. Yeah. Well, there's all kinds of stuff that's, that's still being developed and, dis and explored, like quantum states and, you know, all kinds of stuff that we don't have any real-world practical application for it yet because nobody's taken yeah. that stuff and made it into something that the average person will better their life or you know or entertain them or whatever exactly well i i would really love to i mean it sounds kind of hokey right now but i would love to look into the science of vibration more mm -hmm. of acoustic levitation things of that nature mm -hmm. because eventually if you can perfect that if you can get a lot of that stuff down i mean the the, the possibilities expand quite a bit mm -hmm. and maybe you could use a much smaller amount of electricity or possibly no electricity to do something great, to make something mm -hmm. move, to mm -hmm. do whatever. We, we toss around ideas a lot about like uh, what we're going to do in the future at our future compound and like what, because obviously at some point we're going to have property, we're going to try and build an actual, uh, a place like a, I don't know, warehouse, gymnasium, kind of a, just a big box. <laughs> and then we're going to have underground domes that we're going to build for our, our homes basically. And then, you know, someday we would like to have, you know, an island and a few other things. But um, <laughs> during this time, we're talking about well, the, the, the most efficient ways to run all this stuff. Because we don't want to just be stuck out there on, on, off the grid. Like, we, we would like to be off the grid, actually, is what I, I mean to say. We don't want to be on the grid or dependent on anybody. We want to be completely independent as much as possible. Uh, uh, hopefully we can get property with some water flowing through it. Things of that nature. And we can do a lot, a lot with all that. Um, and then combine different kinds of energy. One of the things we were talking about, though, was steam. Steam power, it's very simple. And as a backup, I was thinking, wouldn't it be awesome to have a place where there is some sort of a steam, uh, basically a boiler in the center down somewhere in a basement or whatever. And this boiler, you hook up different stuff to it and you can make it do different things. Like, let's say you needed some electricity because... You know, there was hail damage to your solar panels and mm -hmm. the creek, the, the, the river dried up or something and your hydro is not working, whatever the case. And you have one of these things. You can actually make it either through steam power or through there's little conduct, conductive pads or ways to make a conductive whatever. you can, Off of heat, you can make electricity. Mm -hmm. There's little things that can convert it. And I forget what they're called energy converters basically hmm. but you could do it that way or you could do it that way plus you could also use that thing to run a steam engine and if you're running something with steam making it go you can then produce electricity through an alternator or something connected to it mm -hmm. so you could make electricity 
but it would be through this thing. Or let's say you needed to cook and there's no electricity, there's a power outage, what, well not a power outage, I guess you got your own power, but whatever happens, you could cook with it because it's still a fireplace kind of thing. Hmm. Or, you know, there's all kinds of different applications for that. You could use it to power or do different things as kind of a backup system. It'd be a little more primitive. But wouldn't that be cool to like base a place around that and then install everything else and you run the place with everything else, mm -hmm. hydro and whatever it be, but this is kind of the backups. One thing I'm going to spend my money on is making a distiller, actually, out of a, they call them trash burning barrels, but you, they're, they're, they're clean enough to make a distiller out of. You take a big metal trash barrel, um, and then you just, yeah, some copper tubing of a certain size, and you just make all the fittings in it. Yeah, it's not too hard well, to do. Because it doesn't have to be a trash barrel, like they have... Water they barrels they call them that yeah. though like water barrels are usually plastic for some reason oh that's but true. if yeah. they call them yeah. that but um the anyways metal 55 gallon barrels mm -hmm. and the reason that we want to do this is because we we do distill a little bit quite a bit of water for different things in our house and it's just we, we've become accustomed to it we, we actually prefer it to tap water which i think has more chlorine and other stuff in it here in the city yeah chlorine fluoride all that stuff but on a larger scale it would make more sense energy wise um, there's well that leads me to another thing actually it reminds me of another thing but energy wise it would make more sense more sense to do it all at once in a big 55 gallon drum bunch of water and then just store it all or you know separate it out as we need it for whatever mm -hmm. and boom we don't have to we could store it and we don't have to do anything with, you know we don't have to do it as often the other thing is that if I make it like this we don't have to do it on the stove anymore mm -hmm. we could take it outside in the backyard do it all at once over a little campfire we make Boom, done, no electricity used. Because mm -hmm. that's quite a lot of energy to make that thing, or to, to, to make, uh, to distill water, to heat yeah. the water and everything. But what's your opinion on pastors and people meeting right now? Mm, yeah, in we the midst of the that. coronavirus epidemic. Yeah. Well, I just shared a thing. A, I know where uh, I stand. But. Yeah, I just shared a thing of a evangelical pastor in Virginia, I believe, who uh, was meeting anyways you against the recommendations by, you know, everybody. Um, yeah. was meeting with his congregation saying, God's bigger than this virus. Well, he just died from that virus. And what that goes to show to me is that, for one, you should never speak in the place of God unless it's from his word. Because that's really, as, like, if you're a preacher, that's what you should be going off of is his word. Because if it's in there, you can't, it can't be wrong. Like you, you can preach that all day long, and you're not going to be preaching anything untrue or um, you know that goes against what God wants. Uh, but for him to make those kind of claims, uh, of course, the problem with it is the whole, th I mean, that, that's the worst case scenario, basically, for a preacher is to, in many ways, is to declare something that could go right or wrong, but isn't necessarily true, and then for it to go wrong, and then all that does is anyone from outside the church says, see, your pastors are liars, they don't know what they're doing, God's not real. And the guy was full of himself and just wanted to get attention and money. Like, that's that's what happened from that result. No glory came to God because that guy made a fool of himself going up, bringing his congregation in, getting the virus, and then dying. I mean, if you look at the pictures from back then and how people had to live and whatnot, right. it's not the same thing. People are Some people are really gloom and doom about the condition of things. I've heard, heard people talking about um, the, the percentage of unemployment in the nation and different things like that. But then I hear other people, like Bedros Kulian and some of these... Um, YouTube valuetainment guy, I forget his name, but different YouTube channels who are entrepreneurial channels and whatnot, they're talking about, hey, if you're sitting around, you know, looking at where the money went right now, sitting scratching your head or whatever, and just saying, oh, we're in a downed economy and whatnot, you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Because these guys are saying, I'm going to make money even in a downed economy, as, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to go make, find a way to make money even in a downed economy. No, it's a great opportunity. Uh, I just, because I... Teaching them to be resourceful. I, I took a, a little bit of money and I bought some uh, partial shares of uh, Amazon and Tesla oh, right yeah. around the nice. time, uh, maybe a week or two after everything started really getting bad economically, financially. Even now, it's still be a good and, time to buy. Well, it's just started to bounce back. It, it is it going It went up, up by like 10% over the past 24 hours on one of my stocks. And 10%, like, that's a lot. So it's like, if you actually have the, again, if you have the resources ahead of time, then when everything dips, that's the time to buy. That's the time when you can actually invest in something that's then going to bounce back because, you know, our economy has always bounced back. Um, and then you're going to be the one coming out ahead, you know, 150% better at the end of it, as opposed to just maybe coming back up to where you were before. Hey, are you going to be part of the podcast now too? This is Nami, by the way, our official Morphite cat. <laughs> You'll probably meet the dog at some point. 
Yeah, if we can get them to sit still for any period of time. They just started to get along. We asked in one of our previous videos, how can you have a cat and a dog? And apparently you just have to have them for like six months or so, <laughs> and then they'll... <laughs> it's only been a couple it, months. Actually. It, has, it's it's only been like, it feels months. like six months. Yeah. There'll be a lot of warfare and a lot of uh, argumentation and hissing and stuff, but eventually... Yeah. Have a good day. <laughs> Goodbye, meow. <laughs> <laughs> da -da -da.